I'm Nine News consumer investigator Steve Steger, here with a look back at all the stories making headlines for your money in the last few weeks. Let's start with an affordability crisis in affordable housing. If you live in a condo or a townhome, chances are you got a letter from your HOA recently and your jaw dropped. Steve on your side has heard from condo owners who've seen hundreds of dollars in increases to their monthly dues. Others have seen special assessments, some in the tens of thousands of dollars. The main culprit, insurance. Premiums for HOA policies skyrocketed this year with no signs of going down. The budget proposed by the executive board. The letter Rosalie Hayes got sounds boring till you get to that one part the part that lays out the increase in her monthly association dues. Um, it goes from 346 a month to 621.50. That's astonishing. That's a lot. Starting in April, her dues are going up nearly 300 bucks a month. I mean, when I opened this letter, it was just like you could have knocked me over with a feather. It was a shock. The reason the insurance has gone up over a hundred thousand dollars. The premium to insure the Sequoia Condominium Association in Arvada actually went up a hundred and forty thousand dollars, more than double what it was last year. It's been so rough. Down the road in Wheat Ridge, Becky Blackett says the increase in Brookside townhomes policy beat that. How much did insurance go up this year? Over 220 percent. The president of the association board, she says she'll have to raise dues and ask for a one-time special assessment. Folks just didn't budget for that when they bought the places. It's an affordability crisis. People can't afford this. Molly Foley-Healy is an HOA attorney. In the last 17 years in Colorado, I can say without hesitation, this is the biggest crisis to hit HOAs. She says condo associations are stuck as insurance carriers get out of the HOA business. It's not only difficult to get policies, but what's more difficult is to get an affordable property insurance policy for the components of the HOA. Anytime you have fewer insurance companies, there's less competition. That also is going to drive prices and availability. Carol so Walker represents insurance companies and says it's a complex issue fueled by wildfire risk, loss from hail claims, and other liability risks that come with an HOA. And these policies haven't been profitable. And we've seen that multi peril commercial, which is HOA insurance, at a 23% loss. Insurance companies are now working with state lawmakers to try to figure out how to solve this problem through a study. It's a real problem and I don't know how to solve it. But that will take time. I'm just not sure what to do because like I said, we have to have an insurance policy. All while homeowners pay the bill and make some tough choices. I'm not sure whether I can afford to stay in Colorado is what it comes down to. Colorado is pricing a lot of people out. Let's dig into this issue a little bit deeper with attorney Molly Foley Healy. Molly, thank you so much for taking the time to talk. It's my pleasure. We appreciate it. All right, so you represent HOA boards across the metro area and the state. What are you hearing from them when it comes to this issue of insurance? It is the biggest crisis they're dealing with now. It is so common, especially in the context of a condominium project. It's the biggest issue we're seeing in associations in relation to problems with massive premium hikes and increase in assessments. So it's a huge issue. And you and I have talked a lot about that. These are affordable homes. Often it's first time home buyers who are getting into these places or people who are on a fixed income. Right. I mean, it's a major problem. You know, people think they're buying a house in a community they can afford. And then these premiums skyrocket in the only type of um, income that associations have to pay for those premiums is the dues income that owners pay. And so we're seeing major dues income, dues increases to uh, homeowners. Yeah. I've heard from a lot of people who are ready to drag torches and pitchforks to their next HOA meeting because they're upset about the boards raising dues, levying special assessments. In some cases, we're hearing like 12, 19, $25,000 yeah. assessments. Could boards be doing more to keep these costs down for homeowners? No, this is not 
a board's responsibility. It's not the board's fault. It's not the manager's fault. But here are some things that can be done. And I've been actually talking to my clients about this. First of all, make sure you have, the boards need to make sure they have a really good broker who can quote several lines of property insurance coverage for their associations. Secondly, the board needs to talk with their legal counsel to look at the declaration of their communities to see, is there a cap on the amount of a deductible that they have in their governing documents? And if so, how do we deal with that? Can we get rid of the cap? Because caps on deductibles are going to have a major premium hike in terms of what the association's paying for insurance. And then the last thing they can do in terms of the declaration is to look at what type of coverage the association's required to cover on condominium units, and then to talk with your legal counsel about amending the declaration to reduce the coverage which the associations require to carry on the units and instead have the owners cover that through their HO6 policies. We were talking about having like the, the kind of product that's out there that exists for HOAs may not be the best in the world because you have these high deductible plans. So not only are HOA boards and HOA owners paying these ridiculously high premiums, they're also paying for something that down the road they're going to have to pay for if they have to take out a claim. What are you seeing with that? Yeah, I mean, so here's the problem. Um, and, and it's why we need uh, the Speaker of the House's bill to get passed and to have the study. The problem is not only are premiums high, but the deductibles can be so high that you only are going to have coverage for catastrophic losses. So, I mean, you could be paying a massive premium and really not have any coverage on units for normal kinds of losses and only have coverage for catastrophic losses like fire, you know, um, a major leak that, you know, really decimates many, many units in a condominium project. So those are all things that really need to be looked at. And what's essential is owners have got to make sure they carry good coverage with their HO6 policy. So they should look, that's the policy, by the way, that homeowners carry on their condominium units. They need to make sure they're carrying the right amount of coverage that their declaration for their HOA requires. Talking to HOA attorney Molly Foley-Healy about this issue of raise it, uh, rising insurance premiums that are costing HOA boards a lot of money and in turn costing HOA owners uh, inside some townhome and condominium complexes a lot of money. Molly, you alluded to the fact the legislature wants to have the insurance commissioner study this issue. Yes. Is that the right move or do they need to act more quickly than that? <laughs> So it is the right move. We need to have a study of what's causing the problem so that we have a better sense of how to fix it. The problem is that study is not supposed to come in until 2026, and we need to get that done much sooner. Um, so the sooner this can be studied, the sooner that the study can show options for assisting in dealing with this issue, the better off homeowners are going to be in HOAs. I want to circle back to something you were talking about a little bit earlier, this idea of there might be options for HOA boards. What are you finding and, and is it cutting that massive increase by a little bit or are you finding solutions that can kind of save HOA's money that where you may not have to see a massive dues increase? It's cutting it a little bit. Steve, um, you know, we're just seeing a significant premium hike. You know, I hear homeowners say, I'm really angry. I had a, 50 per, a $50 increase in my monthly assessments to cover uh, insurance premiums. And being in the industry and seeing the types of premium increases we're seeing across the board in condominium projects, my answer is, be happy. You know, it's not unusual right now to see um, dues increases of three, four, five hundred dollars a month to cover these these increased costs for insurance premiums. So, you know, the best thing we can do is make sure we're not deferring maintenance and association. So we're not having unnecessary water losses, making sure the plumbing is up to date in older projects, making sure that people are using good common sense in how they're dealing with 
their units. They're not leaving water running in a bathtub. They're making sure they're checking lines um, from their their dishwasher, their um, washing machine for their clothes so that we're not having water leaks from there. Check your water heaters. Make sure there's no leaks there. So owners have a responsibility to ensure that the components that are in their unit are in good working condition and are not leaking. And then the boards are looking at options to amend the declaration, the most affordable um, property insurance coverage and, and you know different things that they can do to try to keep those costs down. But the fact of the matter is it's a market issue right now. And you know, you're going to see increases even if you do everything right. They just hopefully won't be these monumental increases of three, four, five hundred dollars a month for owners. Molly, I'll leave you with this. You called this the biggest crisis in HOAs in your 17 years working in the industry in Colorado. What happens if something doesn't happen? I'm afraid, Steve, that what's going to happen is people are not going to be able to afford to live in their homes. You know, I think in your initial story on this, you had people who said they can't afford these assessment increases, these dues increases. They never budgeted for that. And I'm just afraid we're going to have a major problem with affordability. And I'm also concerned that as developers construct affordable housing, that these insurance premiums are still going to make it you know, cost prohibitive for folks to live in their affordable housing units. Affordable housing turning unaffordable. Yes, that, but... because of premiums. Yeah. Molly Foley Healy, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about this issue. I know it's not going to be the last conversation we have about this because I've heard from a lot of people who are in this situation. Thanks so much. Yes, it's huge right now. Let's go to the grocery store now and talk about the hidden way companies get you to pay more for less. How often do you check the label on products you buy at the grocery store? Keep an eye on the net weight or the product count label. Manufacturers get sneaky with a process called shrinkflation. I talked to a consumer advocate who's been tracking shr the shrinking size of products for decades. I've been tracking shrinking products probably since the 1960s. Call it a lifelong obsession. When I was a teenager, I remember my Mounds candy bar used to be two ounces and all of a sudden became one point something. Consumer advocate Edgar Dworsky has spent his entire career doing something consumers don't do enough. Check in the label to see how much products have shrunk while manufacturers charge the same price a phenomenon called shrinkflation. It really is a sneaky way to pass on a price increase. Through the years, Dworsky has seen some shrinkflation doozies. Here's the history of Breyer's ice cream. Originally, ice cream, popular brands, had 64 ounces, they were half a gallon. Then we lost the cup and they went down to 56 ounces. And the current size is typically 48 ounces, losing another cup. He says inflation makes shrinkflation more prevalent. On his website, consumerworld.org, Dworsky's tracking the shrinking size of everything from baby wipes. These huggies somehow lost 64 wipes per box last year to coffee, three ounces less in the new Folgers breakfast blend. Isn't that the perfect scam when the victim doesn't know they've been taken? He also tracks a phenomenon called skimpflation, where manufacturers use different ingredients for the same product. Take this carton of Blue Bunny, for example, which changed ingredients from milk and cream to skim milk and whey. And it didn't even qualify under federal rules to be called ice cream anymore. It's now called frozen dairy dessert for many of their varieties. So what can you do to be a better consumer? Pay attention. They're following the rules, if you will, putting what's in the product on the ingredient statement, putting the net weight or net count on the front of the package. If we don't pay attention to that, shame on us. So what should you do if something shrinks? Dworsky says, research other brands and maybe pick up the store brand, which is often the slowest to shrink, and complain. Consumers can make a difference here. Consider the story of ConAgra's Smart Balance Margarine. Last year, they changed the ingredients to include less oil, went from 64% to 39%. ConAgra got enough one-star reviews that they changed the product back. 
So that would be a win for the consumer. Funeral homes in Colorado have come under scrutiny the last few years for funeral directors behaving badly. The latest case played out in Denver when a man named Miles Harford was evicted from his home only to find boxes of cremated remains in a woman's body that had been decomposing in a hearse in his backyard for a year and a half. He's accused of giving that woman's family an urn of someone else's remains, leaving a lot of other clients wondering if they have their loved one or not. I've never believed it was his remains from the first place. Ashley Nunez always wondered if her dad wasn't with her. She says it took months after his October 2021 funeral for the funeral director, Miles Harford, to finally give the family the remains. And after the news broke today, it confirmed her suspicion is valid. I want justice for not only us, but for all these other families that have to go through this. I want my dad. That's the most, that's the only thing I want is my dad right now. Back on February 6th, Harford was evicted from his home in the 2500 block of South Quitman in Denver. The homeowner discovered several boxes in the crawl space that were determined to be temporary urn boxes containing cremated human remains. After police came, more discoveries. Nearly three dozen temporary urns were located, some of which were empty. Police found urns in the U-Haul out front and in a hearse towed out of the home's backyard. Also inside that hearse, the body of a 63-year-old woman who died in August of 2022, covered with a sheet. Police say they believe she's been back there since her death. Mr. Harford provided the family with the remains of another person. I think most family members would be outraged by that kind of behavior and certainly grieved considerably. Harford's former company, Apollo Funeral and Cremation Services, was based out of this house turned office off Littleton Boulevard near downtown Littleton. An employee who works in one of these offices told me today that hearse was parked in the parking lot for months after he left. When this all happened, he seemed very competent, very personal, very caring and compassionate. David Commodore said he trusted Harford with the remains of his wife when she died suddenly in her sleep in 2019. Now he wonders if the ashes he spread in the garden were really his wife. I feel somewhat betrayed on the whole situation. Denver police have set up a hotline for anyone who may have questions about their remains. The number, 720-913-6610. Harford's funeral home license expired in May of 2022, and he officially closed his business in September of that year. But one couple told me they prepaid for Harford for cremation services last summer, months after his business was done. We were doing this really for our kids, so they don't have to take care of this. Tom Simpleman and Don Campbell were trying to save their kids hassle during grief. He was a friend on Facebook, and we'd like to do business with small businesses. So they turned to someone in their network to pre-plan their funerals. Miles Harford with Apollo Funeral and Cremation Services. It all looked legitimate. Couple says Harford came to their condo, pitched his cremation services, gave them paperwork to sign, and then picked up a check. We wanted a, cre a simple cremation, and that's what he offered. Then? We were supposed to meet with him another time to plan more, but he always had an excuse not to show up. They say they paid Harford a little under $3,000, thought nothing of it until last week, when police announced Harford was wanted on several charges after they found cremated remains and a decomposing body at a home he was evicted from in early February. It appears he got them to pay for something he might not have been able to do. It appears Mr. Harford had accumulated significant debt with several metro area crematories. As a result, these businesses would no longer work with Mr. Harford. It just puts a bad image on everything. Michael Blackburn is the former president of the State Funeral Directors Association. He says he fought efforts by state lawmakers to deregulate the industry back in 1983 and lost. We are one of the only states in the entire country it doesn't have any funeral regulations whatsoever. Something that appears to be changing in Colorado after several cases of funeral directors behaving badly. Yeah. Why do you do this to people? Why did you do that to us? Not soon enough for Tom and Don, who worry they'll never get what they paid for. We thought we were doing the right thing. Now we've got to start over. The Colorado Funeral Directors Association recommends when you choose a funeral professional, you search for their license information on the Department of Regulatory Agencies website.
Finally, have you heard the buzz about high yield savings accounts? Perhaps the one positive thing for consumers about inflation is that it's driven up interest rates for some savings accounts. So I asked a financial expert to break down the pros and cons of these trendy new ways to save. High yield savings account. If you spent any time online, oh, build your wealth. You've heard the buzz about high yield savings account. Best believe my money's gonna work for me. For those of us of a certain age, it sounds tempting. We're used to savings accounts that pay pennies, not dollars in interest. Frankly, money in a savings account wasn't doing a whole lot more than money sitting in a jar, right? Eric Crom is the president of Clear Creek Advisors and a certified financial planner. We asked him the first question, what is a high yield savings account? It's really no different than your general savings account. It's just as liquid as a traditional savings account, meaning you have access to your money just like you would there. And instead of the traditional savings account that offers an interest rate on average of about 0.4%, these accounts offer anywhere from 4 to 6% APY. And as we felt inflation come uh, hard and that we were dealing with the negative impacts of that from an expense standpoint, one of the silver linings is that we can now make some money on our safe investments. Trump says these accounts are protected just as much as your traditional savings accounts. The FDIC covers up to $250,000. Every dollar you have, you might as well get as much as you can. The cons, you're usually only going to find rates like this at an online bank, which can make some people uncomfortable. The reality is online institutions probably have less overhead than brick and mortar, so they're paying more. And that four to six percent return rate may not last forever if the feds lower interest rates this year. They're not the best option for your whole life savings as returns aren't as great as investment accounts where you might traditionally put your life savings retirement savings. Crom says they're a great way to park cash you may need access to though to still get them to work for you, get that cash to work for you. And that's a breakdown of what we've been working on with Steve on your side. As always, if you have a consumer problem you want me to look into, email Steve on your side at 9news.com. Have a great day.